listening to another Apollo Papyrus episode. I am Aaron Apollo Camp. For this episode, my interview guest is the owner of the Author Services Company, 1106 Design, and the author of the 88-page nonfiction book published like the prose. Her name is Michelle D. Filippo, and here's my interview with Michelle. Michelle D. Filippo, welcome to Apollo Papyrus. Well, thank you, Aaron. I'm very pleased to be here. I appreciate the opportunity of this podcast. Feel free to introduce yourself to our listeners. Okay. My name, as you said, is Michelle D. Filippo, and I'm the owner of 1106 Design. And we are on a mission to help authors create great books and sell them and distribute them without a publisher so that they make more money every time they sell a book. You've uh, written a book titled Publish Like the Probes. Without spoiling too much of your book, what it, what is it about, and what was it like to work with uh, the editor of your book, Laura Bramley? Well, I'll tell you, I almost can't claim credit for having written that book because I had written about 50 or 60 blog posts, and I, tr- and I called Laura. She was working for me as an editor at the time, and I said, can you turn this into something that I can give away as a lead magnet, as a, as a, a giveaway? And she did. And she just made my my 60 almost incoherent blog posts uh, look read really well. <laughs> Why did you decide to write your book to a length of only 88 pages instead of writing a longer book? Is your book just really just a comp- uh, compilation of blog posts, or is there a little bit more to it? Well, it's a brief overview of the industry and what I thought were the most important points that authors needed to know about. I didn't want to over- overwhelm them with a 200-page book that went into every detail, first of all, because the details change, and second of all, because I, I you know, people, people like a brief overview these days that the internet has trained us to read short form articles and to get what we need in a very little small amount of time. So that's what I, that was my aim in just making it a a booklet, as you say. Now I'm going to uh, uh, add a point of clarification before I go to the next question. The full title of the book is published like the prose, a brief guide to quality self publishing and an insider's look at a misunderstood industry. Now, my next question is, uh, your company is called 1106 Design. Uh, What is uh, 1106 Design? Did 1106 Design publish uh, your book, Publish Like the Pros? And what services does does it offer to authors looking to publish their books? Well, 1106 Design, first of all, is not a publisher. We're not a self-publishing company. We are what you might call an author service services company. And that means we're offering the services that authors need for those people who are too busy or just don't want to get involved in the complexities of, of releasing a book. And then we help the author distribute that book on the major print-on-demand platforms in their own name so that when a book is sold, they get the sales reports, they get the money straight to their bank account. It doesn't go into any middleman's bank account first, including ours. We are working for the author. If an author signs up with a publisher, the author is working for the publisher and they make less money. So you wouldn't classify 1106 Design as a self-publishing company or a hybrid publishing company, you would classify it as like an author uh, services company. Is that correct? That's correct. You could call us a publishing project management company. There, you know, it, it's it's kind of difficult to define, but the most important thing is that we don't publish the book. The author is the publisher, and that was the original intent of indie publishing when it was first invented. But somewhere along the line, it became, as the subtitle of my book says, misunderstood. And all of a sudden now, we're back to to authors being dependent on publishers and supporting publishers financially, either directly or indirectly. And that's uh, that's the goal of, of our message, which is to make sure that the author always does as good as they can possibly do in this business called publishing. Who was the publisher of your book, Publish Like the Pro? Uh, 1106 Design, me. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> no, no, that that's okay. So I, I'm glad you asked it actually, because I opened up my own accounts at kdp.com and ingramspark.com and uploaded the files. And when a, a copy of my book sells, I get paid directly into my bank account. There is no middleman publisher that receives the money or the reports first. And that's what I'm aiming to tell more authors about so that they can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, why should um, independent authors choose 1106 design for uh, author services? Are there really any advantages over like your competitors or, or going for, uh do like many different companies, depending on the type of author service you need? Well, there's a number of ways authors can proceed. I, I like to think that we offer top quality, traditional publisher quality services. So when we edit and design your book, we're going to do it at a very high level. One of the ways publishing has become misunderstood is that there's a lot of providers in the space right now who offer what can only be described as amateurish services that would never pass muster in the real traditional publishing world. So we work at the higher level because buyers are smart. They know when they have a good book in their hands. They know when it reads well. They know when it's been typeset well and it's easy to read. And we believe that's the level that books should be made at. They're not a commodity, a book is a work of art. The author has poured their heart and soul into that book. And so I feel we have a responsibility to give that book the very best presentation that it can have. Yeah, and you make a very important point because uh, 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 writing and publishing a book is, is uh, I'm going to go off kind of on a tangent here because writing and uh, publishing a book is, is not like, uh, for example, golf. Or, or in golf, if you told an amateur golfer who just plays golf recreationally at their at their country club uh, to play like the pros. That would be really bad advice because uh, not very few people have a, a pro golfer level uh, golfing skill. Whereas in the book publishing world, it's not a competitive sport, and uh, you want to everything to look professional and to whatever uh look like even if it's not traditionally published look like books that are traditionally published in that genre or similar genres that's absolutely correct because when you tell people about your book and they go to amazon and they type in your book title amazon is not going to show only your book they're going to show the best sellers so if your book is not designed to look like it belongs in that group of bestsellers, you're going to stand out for all the wrong reasons. And buyers are smart. If they see a cover that looks self-published and they see best-selling books that look terrific and beautifully formatted and published uh, and designed on the cover, they're going to say to themselves, gee, I don't know. I, I never heard of that author. I don't want to take a chance. That book looks like it's self-published. I think I'll stick with somebody I know and trust instead. So by put, giving your book that good presentation, you are increasing your chances that the buyer will say, gee, I never heard of that author, but that book looks good. Let me give it a shot. Other than yourself, who are some authors that have used your company's services? Oh, gosh, we, we have served. We started in 2001, and we've served about 4,000 authors since then. Uh, we do about 100, between 150, 200 books a year. We've done every kind of book you can imagine, from a little booklet to a novel to business books. We just finished a book about Winston Churchill that was 850 pages, and it had 2,000 footnotes. We are capable of doing any kind of book that you can bring to us because we all have traditional publishing experience. Uh, we're all in the business for decades. No beginners here. How can authors who are interested in uh, using 1106 Design Services get in touch with your company? Well, the best way to start is to go to our website, which is 1106design.com. I put everything on my, <laughs> on my website, including prices, 
educational articles, every service we have with its full description, and there's a contact form there. So if you're ready to get started, you can fill out the contact form, tell us a little bit about yourself and your book, and request a consultation, which is always free. Regarding uh, 1106 Design, does an author have to use 1106 Design as uh, like a package service, or can they use like one or two services that they really need professional help with if that's uh if they wish to go like all all a cart well we i have a package on my website just because those are the services that most people buy most of the time but we're happy to work a la carte and and just do what the author needs i would argue that every service needs to be quality service sometimes you'll hear on the internet that people are uh, ordering a professional book cover, but then they're wrapping it around a homemade interior that was done in Microsoft Word. I think that's a mistake because we have been working on books for decades, like I said, and that's not the way a, a traditional publisher will create a book for you. So um, to my way of thinking, if you're entering a new business, you ought to follow the rules of that business. I will uh, uh, make a couple of notes before I go to the next question. Uh, Microsoft Word is a word processing program, not a desktop publishing program like, um, I think it's Adobe InDesign is Adobe's desktop publishing program. There's also an open source uh, desktop publishing program called Scribus. Yeah, you need to know, authors need to know the difference between word processing and typesetting. If if you browse the internet anymore, you'll, you'll hear the word formatting thrown about authors will go out looking for a formatter, but that's different than the level of service that a traditional publisher would give to you. What we offer and what traditional publishers always do is they hire a book designer and an experienced typesetter who knows how to put books together. We spend a tremendous amount of time making sure every element of the book is perfect, whether it's sidebars, headings, subheadings, chapter openers, illustrations, captions, you name it. There's a whole list of rules and regulations that we follow so that your book looks like a real book and not like it was homemade in Word. And also, I'm going to mention uh, a scam that has been going around the the internet because i've actually received uh direct messages on social media platforms like uh, facebook and instagram by people claiming to offer uh fiber marketing services that anyone uh direct messages you unsolicited about uh fiber services on a platform other than fiber it's probably a scam Oh, yeah, that's that's really important. And it it breaks my heart that there are so many scams out there. It's um, it's not only happening in publishing, of course, it's happening everywhere. But uh, that's why I would say that you need to work with people who are experienced because we've been in it for a long time and we're going to do right by you. My last couple of questions are what do authors need to know about editing Cover, cover design and interior pages. I know that's a multi-part question for my next to last one. Well, based on some of the questions I get in the comments I see on social media, I would I can briefly answer that. Editing is a must. It's not optional. You have to have an objective pair of eyes, look at your text in order to spot the mistakes that that you didn't see. Nobody can see their own mistakes when they edit a manuscript. Uh, cover design, it takes a lot more time and effort than people think. I, I once had a woman call me up on the phone and say, I know that you only spend 15 minutes on the cover. You can't fool me. And she hung up. Well, I can tell you, we spend far more than 15 minutes on a cover. There's a lot to it. The typography has to be perfect. It has to be correct for the genre of book that you've written. It has to be professional looking so that when, like I said, when Amazon shows those bestsellers next to your book, your book holds up to that level of competition. Same thing with interiors. It's your, the interior of your book needs to be typeset, not formatted. A typesetter will adjust the spacing of every line, every word, every paragraph, every page in order to make that book easy to read. And the funny thing is when a book is properly formatted, you don't see the result. 
all you know is that it's very easy to read and you can navigate from one place to another uh, very easily. And that's the purpose of typesetting. So the reader is not distracted from your message with uneven spacing and ugly type. My last question is, what do authors need to know about author website design and why is an author website important? Well, it's very important because if people learn about your book and they want to know more about you, having your own website is a perfect way to do that. You can offer a free chapter on your website if you want to, that people can download and get a, a, a taste of your writing and see if they want to buy the book. You can have questions and answers about the, the material in the book. You can get an email address. If you get, if you give them a free giveaway of some sort, you can collect an email address and keep in touch with them. There's all kinds of things you can do on your website that you can't do on an Amazon author page. Michelle, you are a very fascinating and wonderful guest. I thank you wholeheartedly for appearing on Apollo Papyrus. Well, the thanks go to you, Aaron. I appreciate the opportunity because uh, this is a mission for us. We can't stand it when authors are ripped off or they wind up with low quality books. It's just not the right thing to do. People like Michelle are vital to getting books published, and there are a lot of different types of services available for independent authors. Additionally, one doesn't need to write an epic length work for a book to be valuable to its readers. This is Aaron Apollo Camp reminding y'all to write, read, and publish your passion. Bye for now. Remember to subscribe to the Apollo Papyrus YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash at Apollo Papyrus and the Apollo Papyrus Substack newsletter at apollopapyrus.substack.com. Y'all can visit the Apollo Papyrus website at camparinapollo.witsite.com forward slash Apollo Papyrus and follow Apollo Papyrus on threads, Instagram, Facebook, and Tumblr at Apollo Papyrus. Copy Copyright 2024, Aaron Apollo Camp, all rights reserved. This podcast episode is intended for the private listening of our audience. Any reuse or retransmission of this episode without the express written consent of the podcast host is prohibited, except under fair use guidelines. Royalty-free music and sound effects obtained from https colon forward slash forward slash www.zapsplat.com.